right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world, 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 world. And that's a fact. It's a fact. It's, it's like you can look it up. If you type in greatest show, no, I'm Captain Bro. That's what we're going to be there one day. You ain't Captain Bro. We're, yeah, facts. I ain't Captain Bro. Let me know. Let me know. Hit that like, hit that share, let everybody know you in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you use a mother. Hater, 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 You ain't know he could do that, did you? You ain't know. Champ is a secret weapon in this motherfucker. There it is, there it is, there it is. Um, this episode is sponsored by BT. B E T T T T T The greatest network in the world, 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 world. world. <laughs> well, like, I like the hater, hater, hater. But uh, uh, they got this uh, thing going on called the greatest rap crew of all time. If you want to vote on it, go to BT.com, check out the bracket, and cast your votes, and we'll be covering it, you know, as it develops. Shout out to BT. Um, Mac, what's good? Salute, King. Um, Rest in peace, Harry yeah. Belafonte. Yes. Rest Visionary, legend, peace. musician, actor. Activist. Activist. On the front lines for all of it, made a lot of what you see today possible. Just because you don't know, don't mean it doesn't exist. Do your research. One of the smoothest brothers on the planet. We're right. not even going to get into the fact that whenever you say, hey, yo, and everybody else says, day, yo, that comes from yeah, him. Right. It ain't just from Beetlejuice. And it yeah, ain't just not. from a it ain't <laughs> start with Beetlejuice. And it ain't just from the basketball Gina game. Gina ain't start nah. from Beetlejuice. Yeah. Just yeah. so y'all know. She never said <laughs> Just oh so God. y'all know, look up your legends. That was one of ours. That was a pioneer. He's responsible for all a lot of things you see us do, BET included. When be no black entertainment. He was one of the original black excellence cats out here making it look good to be black. Salute to Harry Belafonte. Rest in peace, King. Absolutely. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> Moment of silence. Peace. Ah, get Alpha. Speaking on. of um, rest in peace, we gotta say rest in peace to Jerry Springer. That was the homie. Yeah, oh, fact. Oh, rest in peace man. to Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Yo, rest you know in peace mean? to Jerry Springer. Man. Jerry, 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 Jerry. 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 <laughs> right. What you mean, hey, my baby? Jerry passed <laughs> away. Moy retired. A lot of y'all ladies gonna have to figure out who your baby father is by yourself now. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> hey, got good luck. No That's a fact. And they trying to ban abortions. Uh, it just took Are a left turn. That's not going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. Um, yeah. You can't it's control women's bodies. I, however, I feel like it happened in Atlanta already. Some, Did it some, happen? some parts. Like, uh, I think um, but but Atlanta's part of that, right? I think Texas sure. was in the was in the fourth. I'm just looking for an explanation for Nick Cannon. That's, He's not playing. Shout out bro. to Nick, though, man. Look, look, I know what you're doing, man. You're creating a whole new Wild and Out crew. No, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Nick Cannon. You don't have a cat no family. But the legacy, like, yo, son, you're going to be walking around, you're going to see Cannon on buildings and shit like that. It's just going to be. It's going to be a whole bunch of them just running around. Yo, running outnumber the wings. I need to get started on that. I got. I mean, I got. I got you a already couple, started, brother. But I, I need a couple <laughs> more, son. I need to like, you know what I mean? This summer's going to be ridiculous. Yeah, There's a lot of ladies out there that's going to be candidates. Yeah, I think I, I think I need to, you know, get out there and start seeding the world with my with my genetics. Oh, pause, pause, pause. Abandoned shit. Seeding pause the that. world. How's that a The world, pause? because you didn't put it's a the world. You got to say women. You didn't say seeding a gender. Seeding the women. You there you go. Gender, there you go. Seeding. Seeding. The world is everybody. Yeah, pause you know that. I mean? Pause this person. <laughs> Yo, listen. <laughs> when he say some crazy stuff, man. If you're beautiful, you got your own paper. And, um, you ain't no hater. You know, you want to you want to correct something in your genetics, like you're short, or you know, you know you're not like athletic. You know, come on. He's Send like me six a eight. DM you know? me, you know. See what it is. Get some giants walking around. Out here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, I'm just saying. Man, I'm gonna start an OnlyFans. 
You gonna be like, yo, I, I, yo, I've been thinking about that, bro. I ain't even gross. Been thinking about that. You gonna, you gonna that. be like Anthony Mackie in that Spike Lee movie? <laughs> Remember that movie? Oh, she <laughs> hates me. That's yeah, my favorite yeah. shit. That's my. That's shit. my favorite shit. I love that movie. However, right. when you try it, it's it's not as easy. It's a as whole it different looks. ball game. It's not as easy as it looks. Yeah. Gat, yeah, didn't you say you was gonna start your OnlyFans? You got enough content. <laughs> Got enough content, don't you, brother? Yeah, I'd allow. You like said you was gonna call call it nail him, nail him I would never. <laughs> I would never nail him dead. Bumba Cloud. Wow, Man, boy, I listen right to this now. guy, man. Yo, for a whole summer, that was his name, nail him dead.com. Nah, that wasn't my name. That was a saying. That was something I had everybody running around saying. And all. But every time nigga saw you, they was like, nail him dead.com. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Chilling them, nailing them to the cross, you know what yeah, I can't that. say the same, man. Word. I Yo. Can't say the same. So today we have uh, one of the one of the, the CEOs of one of the greatest movements in hip hop. Um, when you hear the words "We are the streets," I know you think about three people, but it was a whole movement that went along with that. When you hear the words "It's dark and hell is hot." I know you might think Def Jam, but it's another brand that goes along with that too. Um, one half of the leadership that made these situations possible is joining us on the show. Yo, we got D in the building, man. D! No freaky. Oh, no, switch seats, switch seats, no, switch seats. No, 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 Yo, so yeah, my yeah. What's up, baby? What's up, legend? Yeah, how you yeah, guys doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You in here, you in here. Absolutely. You in here, I'm in here, baby. Yeah, what's up? You right here, right. D. What's Look up? like a thinker. <laughs> Do what I can. Feel like one. Doing, That's the rumor. You right here, bro. What's up, bro? Matt. You look like Paul. You got to uh, pass me one of them waters. You want some water? Water's good. <clears throat> We're trying something new, man, because usually people see who the guest is before we introduce them, and we try to switch it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do it, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Well, however they want to do it. Oh, thank you. Ah, T, what's good, my man? Look, baby, I'm here. I'm happy to be around you, brothers. Happy to be around you, I feel you like too. I'm brainstorming right now. Yeah, this is I can feel intelligence. <laughs> Coming up with our next plan, you know? It's a meeting. Coming up with our next plan. You already baby. know. It's a meeting of the minds. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's what it is. So you, you've been following the show? Yeah, I mean, I look at it here, and I'm not a TV dude. I don't look at nothing, yeah. technically, but I'm familiar with it. That's great. You know, awesome. and I got to support it. That's the goal. Awesome. And, I, I you know, I, I ran into you a couple of times in Harlem. You always in Harlem. You know where my block is at. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a hood nigga for real, for real. Like I, I still <laughs> fuck with my people, period. You can't give me, you know yeah, what? Dude. They told me, I said, if you gotta give me, if I'm gonna make a lot of money and I can't associate with my people, then I probably don't want it. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So I still deal with my same people, I'm still on my same area. The hood. And that's, the, that's how you see me, because I'll be outside. Facts, facts. Okay. Yeah, G Gina was looking for the hood. So <laughs> maybe you can show her where your block is at. <laughs> this, is, this is the hood, technically. Right. You just a block over, a block it. over this way. It's, <laughs> we in the area. Right. Now, see, uh, I, want, I want to take things back to the beginning. Before you guys got into music, you know, allegedly, it was, it was the streets. It's not allegedly, it was the streets. <laughs> it's a fact. It's okay, a fact. cool. You know, you know, I, I like to do this. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. They, but, they, but you know, they go, I can say allegedly, they're going to be like, well, look at his record. This is not allegedly. Oh, <laughs> He's a real felony. He's past the statute of limitations. They got five felonies already. <laughs> we ain't going to play with it. We just, you know, we just, um, we come from where everybody else come from. And, and even though we had to go through the struggle, we just, you know, we was focused, focusing. We had an opportunity to make that transition, mm. and we took it and we ran with it. Well, when did you recognize that you had that opportunity? We, we, we probably, my brother was doing it. We was out in the street doing whatever we do, and he 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 he, he got into the music, and he, he ran into a couple of artists. He had X, and then he was working with that. Then we got together and we worked with X, and 
that's when we started doing music. You know, we started working with one project and then uh, X introduced us to the locks. Then I had Mace, I had Cam. I had mostly, uh, mostly all the artists that it was on before they came, Mace, mm -hmm. Locks, X, everybody was, was a part of our little uh, grind when we was coming in. Right, so if I was to put it in order, I would say Mace got his situation first. What happened was Puff, let me give you a little history right quick. So Puff, me and Puff is kind of like this brothers, like, because his father and my father were best friends. Mm -hmm. They grew up together. They grew up from Patterson. Right. So they was like brothers. His, brother, his father had got uh, in the situation, got killed, and, 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 and me and him was kind of all right, tight to a degree. You know, Puff was more like a corporate. He went to college. He did all the, the proper things that you're supposed to do. Right. And they covered them. You know, we was from the street. So right. we put it together later as we got older. And, you know, he do what he do. I do what I do. And, you know, we always know we're family. Though. At the end of the day, we're well, family. From what age were you guys familiar with each other? I didn't get familiar with Puff and him because he's from Mount Vernon. He say Harlem, but he really came from Mount Vernon in Harlem. But um, I didn't really meet him until like we started doing music, and my father told me that um, his his father was his best friend, and I said okay. So I embraced him even more because he was family. So I said, all right, well, if he's family, then he's family. So we kind of got close a little bit, and he was um, he was already doing the music business. And I wasn't doing the music. I was in the street. Right. So when I came from doing this, coming from the street and coming into the music, he embraced me, let me in, and I had locks <clears throat> and amazing. He wanted them. I said, "Hey, you take them, because I don't really know much about the business. So what I'll do is I'll give them to you, and I'll manage them so I can learn the business. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I just managed them, and, and I got to go on tour and run around and everything. So I learned it for about a year. And some change, I learned the business from just running with him while he was doing the artist. Mm -hmm. And um, I had them, I had Mace, he wanted Mace and the locks. We gave him them, but he, you know, X he couldn't really handle because X is a different, a different whole <laughs> other stuff. Like, yeah. Nah, we ain't gonna put you, I, I just let X wait. Right. And then by the time I brought X in, I knew the business. I knew how to do the music at least. Right. So that's what happened, you know, we, we always stayed in, we stayed in touch with the family, you know, we like distant brothers. We 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 not gonna hang out, but if he called me if I need him, he come. If I need him, he comes. That's how it works. So what, brought on, what brought on the transition in the first place? Being in the streets as heavy as you were, why switch over into music? Why? That's you know how that goes. So be the death how long you wanna stay in the street? <laughs> right. Either dead or in jail. It's two ways it is a fact. Mm -hmm. There is no maybe or if it's Jail or dead, take your pick. So, you know, you, you've been out there so long, because we've been in the street for a minute. So you have to wake up and one day and say, something's going to click and be like, okay, what do you want to do? You can do this or that. That's my question. What was the click? What was the moment it was like, I got to stop? Was it Y when he found X and you said, you know, I am. This is my way out? Yeah. Right. You know what it was? We was already, we was doing music already, because mm -hmm. we had a studio, we was already working. X, X, X was a trigger, too, because we knew that he was nice. Mm -hmm. He brought him to me. Why well, had him brought him to me? And I was like, oh, yeah, he's nice. But I don't know nothing about the music business, period. But right. I'd be nice just knowing me saying it. I had to go learn the music. Mm -hmm. So I had to go study Puff while he's doing their albums and stuff. And that's what kind of triggered me because I asked him one day. I was like, so if you had to take a position in music, what would be the best position to take? Because you could be a manager, you could be assistant, you could do all those different things. He told me, he was like, the best thing you can do is learn how to do music. So you woke up one day just ready to leave the streets alone all by itself. Not, nothing dramatic happened, nobody got arrested. You just, no, no, no. One day you just woke up and was like, I'm done. You just well, knew the clock was ticking. Yeah, I just knew, I just knew the one clock was ticking and I woke up and I just knew that that opportunity I might never get again. Mm. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I was already all right. I had a little bit of money. I'm good. I was straight with that. I wasn't worrying about that. 
but you don't get them opportunities every day. So I just woke up and was like, I'm going to have to make this move. I'm going to have to go this way and leave everybody that I've dealt with this way. So I kept it moving in the business, you know, just keep on Was moving. that hard to do? Leave leave the crew behind and leave No, nah, I behind. didn't leave. I didn't, you know what? All my people are still my people to this day. Gotcha. I, I don't, I don't um, disassociate myself with people I grew up with. These are my people. Mm -hmm. I still deal with them right now to help them to do better. Right. They doing positive stuff as well because I did positive stuff. Hmm. So I, what I did was when I got in the business, I bought everybody that I was outside doing all the whatever with, and I bought them in and showed them. So when I go on tour, I bring everybody that I was hanging with, and they got to see a different side of life, like go into different states. And, and when I, you know, when they came back, they got businesses. They some people did some some good things, so it, it was beneficial for me. It worked for me for them. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so on this journey with Mace and the locks, they get signed uh, to Bad Boy. Um, what was that that like? That initial seeing Mace, you know, come out with the records, you know, Big Biggie passing away, and you know him getting his shot and seeing how rapidly he grew. Because I think from the like the first video, Mace was like. Yeah, the joint yeah, with uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that Puff, Mace was like Puff's little brother, so he clicked to him very quickly because Mace can adapt to like flamboyant, flashy. The locks was a little harder, mm -hmm. so he's like, "Let me just get you because you into the women, you into this." Right. So that's why he was able to dress him and do all this dancing and stuff. The locks were too hard for that; they wouldn't have been able to follow that path at that moment. Right. They couldn't really. They did it a little bit. Shiny suits and they ghetto guys, so they you know that was like they didn't like it. They wow. wanted to stay in their boots, their jeans, and where they come from. Not the bright suits and Versace. They ain't Versace guys. But originally, it was Murder Mace. Murder Mace. That was the first. Did he make so, me pretty? So what, yeah. What, what, did what was that? Pretty. Did he make him pretty? <laughs> what was that like when when? When Diddy was like, nah, you gotta drop the murder. Was there any resistance? Was there like, nah, man, you know, I'm murder Mace. They know nah, me nah, murder. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, Mace went with the flow because he's like a flamboyant guy. He liked the flashy. He's like, he like a Diddy guy. Like, right. he liked the girls, the money. And if I gotta drop the murder, that's not a problem. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. he, ain't, he ain't arguing. So it was, um, he was good with the Mace. Because the streets, he came in, like you said, murder Mace was his real name. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you think it was probably him seeing that side of life musically that made him say, you know what, this is what I really want. I really don't want to be this murder mace character. I really want to be this person because that's what's bringing in his bread. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he, he, he thought he had to put on his business cap mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I could do that. That ain't really get me nowhere. I ain't really no murderer anyway. Mm -hmm. I just got the name and... If I got to take that murder off and just run with Mason, that's what we're going to do. We get <laughs> to this money. That was a smart move. Wasn't that the that. whole line? Huh? I was murdered. P. Diddy made me pretty. pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Get with me. That yeah. was the whole line. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's, that, that, that's okay. about right. Guess it wasn't no cap in that. So, <laughs> so from there, Mace takes off. Harlem World drops. Classic album. Pretty much every other record is a single. He's all over the radio. You're right. still managing him at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I was still managing him at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should manage him. He wakes up one day and he says, yo, I don't want to do this no more. Who, Mace? Yeah. Mm, you know what? That was the second album. Right, right, right before the second album. Yeah. Double, double. double yeah, out. so Harlem double World double. was out. Right. Yeah, yeah, he was doing all, because he did All Out. Didn't he do right. all, out? all Out? Was that yeah. All Out? All yeah, out. All he out. did All Out with all them guys. Right. It, it was him, Little Baby J. Uh, uh, Blinky Blink. Blink, Blinky yeah. Blink, yeah. It was about Yeah, Mino. It was about four or five mm -hmm. of them from Harlem, and they, they had the All Out chains on. Right. Loon. I remember that. Loon. Right. Yep. yep. Baby Stace. Mm-hmm. All of them. He had that little, he put that little crew together, and I guess they had that little deal, and I don't know how much he did with it, but, you know, but things I, but at the time you were you were managing Mace and Mace didn't he go to Atlanta and like sign some deal with JD, Jermaine Dupri to get that all out situation? I want I want to I want to keep it on when he decided to leave the game to go on his church thing. Yeah, 
Oh, you know what? Tommy did all that. I don't even think we was even around him like that at that point because he was in Atlanta. We was here, so when he probably lived over there, he was making all of the decisions as far as, you know, pasta and all that. I ain't, I ain't seen none of that. That was all in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. New York was here. You know, he, he, you know, people was jealous of him and saying things, so he was running into situations here. So it was his best move <laughs> is to just move and go start all over again. So that's what he did. Okay. Okay. How hard is it being, going from being in the streets to managing artists? Like you start off just really being responsible for yourself and your best interest and your crew behind you, but as you go, your crew goes. But now you have to deal with an artist who has like, you know, they got these creative ideas they want to do. They got all these moves they want to make. They start bringing in a whole bunch of other people around them. And you got to sift through all this stuff and still tell this guy what to do for his own good right. while his ego was going nuts. And you got major artists who are getting major looks all under your hand at the St. Mace, the Locks, and mm. DMX and Eat. Like, yeah. these are major move makers whose eyes you have to you, you got to stay with them at all times it's a lot of moving parts how did you yeah. switch mentalities that quick you know what it, it, it wasn't as hard because you get the it's, it's, if i had to work on eve's album it was just eve's hours i just block everything out and go focus on eve hmm. so i worked at the um all albums i did all the projects with them and hmm. we was in the studio every day hmm. every day it wasn't like i ever left them we did every day, so you got to vibe with them. If it's an Eve project, that's what we focus on. We ain't worrying about X, we ain't worrying about nobody but Eve. And then it's an X album, we do the same for every album. And that's so you got to get into their world. Like you got to become them kind of to be able to get a good album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that leads to a, that lead, I don't know if how much further ahead you want to get, but that actually leads um, you to a couple other places. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, and I know where you're going. So let's, let's, to pull it back and go to the locks. Now, locks, they're in this situation. I always thought this is my theory. And it, you know, in fact, it, it's not fact. I always thought, yes, the locks was the street dudes. Mm -hmm. So, but what was going on at Bad Boy at the time? And there was a billion other New York rappers who felt the same thing. We wanted to duck. The shiny suits, even though the shiny suits was winning. Yeah, that was it was that was around the Versace time and the, right. The but if it was from the hood and you rap, you know, you was like, I don't know, man. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah, yeah. I ain't trying to wear leather all summer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that ain't with me. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I actually, I actually took an opportunity to go at Eminem. Shout out to Eminem through Benzino because I thought I would be able to duck the suits. Right, 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 right. That was my mo main duck motivation. <laughs> if I could do this yeah. first, if I could get around they get suit, me, they I'm know good. me, I'm good. Yeah. I ain't gotta do the suit. Right, right. But um, the locks, that wasn't their vibe. Mm -mm. So after doing it, because they did it for a while with Puff, yeah, they did it um, Money, Power, yeah. Respect comes out. Yeah. Was there a frustration with them? Like, yo, this ain't us. Like what led to them wanting off? A bad one. You know what? They 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 didn't really. Where Puffin was going wasn't really where they really represents. Like they really represent the streets. They was borderline street corporate bottles. They don't know nothing about all that yet. Mm -hmm. They just know about their block, where they come from, and that's what they rhyme about. Until they get older, then they know as they go. But they didn't want to want to um, wear suits and stuff. They wanted to wear jeans, regular pants, boots, Tim's. Right. They wanted to go that route. Right. So that's where the friction was, is that we now, can't be ourselves. Now, was the influence the success of DMX? See, you know your fucking homework. <laughs> you know your homework. That's how I know you know your homework. See, what happened is this. See, we knew, I had all of them, so I know who was the best. I know X was the chosen one. Yeah. But, you know, I had them for like eight years before I even got them a deal. But X is D1. Eight years? I had X on for eight years. Yes. I don't even, I can't even, but years. So we always would be in the studio, you know, when X rhyme, everything stopped. Period. I don't care who's rhyming, how many it is, wherever we go. He just had that, that about him. Yeah. So everybody that rhymed with him know 
he's the one. All the rappers know, like, he's the one. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people on the outside wouldn't know, but when he come in the studio, he shut it down. And actually just the chosen one, but he was difficult to deal with. So I knew if I just gave him to somebody or give him a deal, they wouldn't have been able to deal with him because he was too difficult. So how so? Yeah. Give me the difficult. I mean, X don't come. He come. He might not come. Mm. He show up. He don't care. You, you know how difficult it is. He missed yeah. two times. He came to the Grammy. He still don't go. You the Grammy? <laughs> I don't care about that. Yeah, I'm over here. <laughs> he might be flying his plane somewhere, but he just... You know, he, he just didn't care about the money and the fame. He just loved to do it. His passion was just doing it. The money never changed him. The fame didn't change him. You know, he had different things he was dealing with in his life, but he just always remained the same. He's just that guy. No matter how much you gave him, he just, he can walk in the projects right now and just be like, hey, what's up, how, how your people doing? And that's just how he was all the way until he passed. For better or for worse. Hmm? I said for better or for worse. Better or for worse. He was yeah. so it's, he never so, changed. So was it like the lock seeing that DMX was staying true to his authentic self? And still won. them saying to they self, like, yo, look at what X is doing. He ain't shifting his narrative. He ain't he wearing suit. He yeah. ain't wearing suit. He, he, he he's still winning. Four, yeah. three, two, one. That was yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You exactly. know, he had the, the, the Pico, yeah. 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 he had the joint. Exactly. That was yeah. it though. Yeah. So he had no shirt. Exactly. So it's like Puff, why you gotta market market us this way? And X is over here being his authentic being self. self. Right. So was was X the influence in the lock saying, yo, we don't even want to be a part of Bad Boy anymore? He, they probably didn't say it, but they probably witnessed it and been like, you know what? If he can do it, why we can't do it? Because he right. X never changed nothing. He came, his first video we shot, one of the first videos we shot with X was in the tunnel. Right, right. Get at mm. me, dog. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That yep. was the one. He came High in Williams. there yeah. with, with no shirt on. Mm -hmm. A farmer suit, Tim's, and right. that's how he went. And that was it. That's it. Right. No clothes, don't give me no shirts, I don't want none of that. He had no shirt on, he just went in there, and that was it. Was it true the locks, was the, the, all three of them were supposed to be on that record prior to him, it just being him and Sheik? No, it was, it, it was just, it was only supposed to be him and Sheik, because X did the, the verses, but Sheik just did the chorus. Right. Because right. his voice fitted. So he was like, all right, let me, all right, go ahead, Sheik, you do it. He did it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, so you know, but the good part is that it's crazy because X introduced us to the locks. He was like, I got some guys that's nice. I was like, all right, take me where they at. He took me to the right. block and he was like, there they go right there. So he introduced us to them because they're all from Yonkers. Mm. Mm. That's how it went. So X, the X also introduced Drag on? No. Drag is from the Bronx. Right. Right? So... Mm. I met Drag, but I used to be on 125th Street right. at the Mart, mm -hmm. but Drag used to be over there working, hustling, so I used to see him all the time, and then I was the man, and he, he ran to me, I was like, oh, okay. So I took him and just brought him in and, and, and just helped him get through his little time, and he was, you know, I, I pulled Drag myself, because he was standing there. I seen him every day for at least the whole summer, so I mm -hmm. took him in and just worked with him. Mm -hmm. I always thought DMX put drag on them. I thought they were related at first. Yeah, I thought they were they look cousins, like cousins or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, they, they never knew each other. Drag is from, from the Bronx, and I just met them on 25th Street, and then I right. just embraced them and let them come to the studio, and they start working from there. Spinning right. back, that means that, from that story, that means that DMX was a bigger influence to the locks than Biggie. 100%. Biggie started mm. off as a street mm. dude too, but Biggie put the suits on and it didn't affect anything. It just it just upscaled him. Yeah. But it never it never hurt his But it worked for him just like it yeah. worked. That's it what makes, I'm saying. Billy it was, never hurt his Biggie was able to balance it out. Yeah. Right. That's my point. That's, that's exactly like, what I'm saying. Once life after death, he balanced that shit out. Mm -hmm. Street, shiny suits, whatever. Mm -hmm. Puff marketed that shit genius. Perfect. Yeah, it worked. Even after he broke his leg, he's with the cane, yeah. he got yeah. the suit on. But he talked about everything he went through mm -hmm. in life after death. That's the thing. He told he's told his story word for word. Nah, ready to everything die. he went to. Was no, 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 life after no, death. Right. Come on, bro. Bro, let's let's yeah. come on, stop. You talking to me, stop. bro. Stop. <laughs> I, yeah, I was but, locked yeah. up listening to the them albums. And, that's and cool. But but I'm from Peace and Don't Deliver, bro. We know that. Yeah, man. 
Pass you don't know shit, boss, man. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no deep thinking in you. <laughs> Any nigga that's sick, you know. Critical you, analysis. You stare that damn four walls. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. Exactly. Exactly. We're gonna dissect every <laughs> fucking Quick. syllable. I start counting bricks on the wall. You see how many bricks on there? It's one thousand and two. Because <laughs> I bought it. That's a fact. I'm telling you. Yep. But okay, so DMX told his life story too. Just yes. a rougher life story. Yep, yep. It, it was it was a, it was an as difficult life story. Right. Right. It's dark and hell is hot. He told his life story too. I just it it's it's striking me how two very successful MCs who start from the streets, um, and you can go this way, you can go that way. You can go the Biggie Smalls route and wear a suit and still talk all the G shit and still you know be in a mansion shooting your guns at people when they come in on on uh. Who the hell is on warning, right? Or you can be in the tunnel with no shirt, razors in the mouth, and the dog on the leash talk. Or or, or in the, no, even even better, (laughs) an even better visual, in the jail yard with a bunch of dudes wearing greens, Uh lifting weights, talk about, mind your business, lady. Like, you can uh can go either way, and the locks took a look at both of these icons and decided to go to DMX. I agree with you to an extent. When you think about Biggie, and DMX, DMX did what the fuck he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Biggie took the tutelage from Puff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He listened to Puff. He said, okay, Puff, this is the direction we going. This is what's gonna get my family out the hood. Yeah. This is what's gonna make me better, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna roll with that. And still and DMX be me. didn't give a fuck. And still be me. See, that's 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 what yeah. I think, that's the, the most important thing I, went, I, I, I take from these situations is both guys decided to be themselves. Biggie evolved into what we saw when he passed. X evolved into who he was, right? Mm. But mm. one had a one had a huge jump. No, in no, 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 no. But you got you got to keep in mind. What would you call I, I, it? If you biggest, don't call the, it an evolution, the what biggest would you call point it? to what y'all talking about right now is that X was so real about his shit mm-hmm. that the people he introduced you to got deals before him. Yeah, and he was good. That's a fact. You're right. That's a fact. Yep. That's, some, that's, true. Deals before. that's true. That's some just knowing. Nah, I'm going to have true. my time. Yeah. Rock out. Ah, mm-hmm. Circumstantial. Because who's to say Biggie wouldn't have did, done that himself? He he put little Kim where she was. No, but. He put they, little C's where he was. A big no, I get it. I'm saying that to say they didn't see X's success yet. Right. They saw Biggie's. And true. they came after the true. fact. True. Okay. You know what I'm saying? True. Yeah. True. true. And once X took off, like. Now, X was. I done heard a million stories in these chairs about X. We had a, we had a Dan pit maker. Grease. We had Dan Grease in here. We had a, Grease. Grease was around from the beginning. Self service, um, you name it. Uh, we had Styles and had Joe talk about, about X. Joe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the stories that I heard, I don't know if it's true. Allegedly, you gotta do the alleged. We go with the alleged, but we go if it's really Pass the statue of limitations. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> Don't worry about that. Pass the statue of limitations. Really limitation. um, well, X was in a management situation when he came to you guys, right? He, yeah, he probably yeah he was probably in the management situation. Yeah, right. I think so. Yeah, and you guys helped him get out of it. Yeah, we helped him. How did y'all help him get out of it? He's Tell that smiling. story, D. Come on, D. Tell that story. You know what? What, what it was is that they from Yonkers, so mm-hmm. the guys that was from up there in them areas is Westchester. So they kind of um, knew that they didn't know what they was doing at a young age, but they knew they had talent. So they ran and got them to sign a bunch of paperwork and wasn't really doing nothing with them. And they just had them sitting. So they had them for five years, four years, and they not doing anything. So by the time we came around and we connected with them, you know, we had to go through... Um, trying to get releases and get them out and sign them to us. So we had to go to different situations and talk to the managers. And we had one manager, he was probably, you know, he probably don't understand what pain feel like. But uh, <laughs> you got to introduce him to it lightly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you like like you ain't from That's what I like to hear. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah nigga. Allegedly. Give it up. Allegedly. 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 Look, look, Allegedly. It, it's all good because that was 10 years ago. But, right. you know, that. you, you got to deal with it accordingly. But, you know, we was trying to do the right thing for them. Because right. you holding them just because you got them in the paperwork don't mean that you're going to hold them until they no good. Right. So you want to hold them forever? I said, no, you can't do that. I mean, I mean, 
the best thing, you know, we could do, I think maybe Styles was, but we had to talk to the managers that they had at that time, right. which is a bunch of people that just knew how to sign them but didn't know nothing about music. Right. And wasn't doing nothing with them. They haven't did anything or anything. So, you know, we went over there. We was talking to, uh, I forgot this guy's name, but one of them, that, who was it? That was, um, it was the locks. They had the okay. locks signed in paperwork. And we went over there. We tried to, first we tried to talk, and then we had to figure it out. And I was like, look, we just got to figure this out because this is taking too long. You're going to drag them out. You already had them four years. You're not doing nothing with them. If you can't do nothing with them, you know, let us get them. We'll take them. We'll take them and get them to do what they got to do. Right. And he was giving us a little friction, and we figured it out. And as we go in a little longer, and then eventually he did whatever. I mean, it didn't get to nothing we had to do anything with. But, mm -hmm. I mean, he just said, all right. So it worked out for us. We didn't have to do nothing to a person, but. Listen, I'm hold on, hold on, D. Hold on, man. I, I got to ask, man, because <laughs> you putting sugar on shit right now, man. Hold on. No, 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 no. I mean, it, not, it, it, not yeah. like that. Not like no, no, that. No, no, go ahead. Tell it. I want to hear it. They so, might have said something that I didn't Allegedly. 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 allegedly right? Let's go with that allegedly. So the rumor has it that. Rumor has it, right? Rumor that has it. It was a rundown situation. Dogs were involved. Pulled up to the crib. Yo, listen. We trying to figure this out. Y'all not really understanding what we saying. So why don't we take it? to this route here. Here goes the paperwork, release it, and we can we can move comfortably from here. It ain't gotta go to where y'all may want to take it. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's see there's more than one. I'm just talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's, I'm what's the story you heard? I'm talking about the locks right now. Right, right. <laughs> you want to uh, talk about X? That's another uh, story. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about X. It should yeah, yeah, get, yeah. get tricky. Yeah. yeah. X is first, he's second, who's next? Right. But, you know, it was right. just, you know, they was in paperwork, all of them, because they all from Yonza. So the situation you're probably talking about was a, um, could have been a, a X situation, you know, uh, that we, he had, he was signed to something and we had to go back and forth with this guy and whatever happens, but nothing really got to that level and they signed right. and it was good. Hmm. It didn't go there, but it could have. Hmm. Right. Cool. I mean, I, I, I can't even tell you. If I sit here and tell you it could never go there, they're gonna be like, he's lying, cause look at the look at his record. He got a bunch of felonies. He's he's been all over the place, so it's not like my life is like that. Right. I was blessed to be able to make a transition. Right. Mm. I come from that. I didn't did about four or five, but I didn't did everything there's to do coming up in this in this environment to survive to make it. You right. know, mm -hmm. so that's I just go back and help as many people as I can so they don't have to do what I had to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. my goal. Absolutely. You're a great example of that, bro. 100%. I mean, that's all, that's all our jobs, is to save as many as the youth as we can. They look up to us, so you got to tell them how to go that way instead of going that, that way. way. Mm -hmm. right. That's the way you go. And hope they listen. Yeah, they, they, they don't, you know what, these, they, they, they not listening. They act like they're not listening. That's the trick. But they hear you. It's impossible for them not to hear you. Now, if they don't take it in right then and there, never stop talking to somebody because you don't think they listen. They hear you. They just ain't saying nothing yet. They're going to go back in the room and think later when something come up and be like, damn, I remember he said that. Mm -hmm. Respectfully. That's a fact. That's a fact. Respectfully. I won't say I out and out disagree with you. Right, right, right. But I'm not waiting for you to make a decision to come back out that room, bro. Like, the clock is ticking. Yeah. You either going to get right or get left. I'm not, yeah. gonna, I'm not gonna keep beating you in the head. I may say it twice. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to you. By the time you come out that room, I might be out the house. Like it, it's up to you. But I'm. Where, I don't. Where do you meet all these hard-headed rappers? <laughs> every, about every, 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 every episode. Everywhere. Dude. everywhere. Where you are only they? hear about the success stories because yeah. those are the ones who listen. The dudes who don't listen, you never lot, hear about, yeah. but they're Say their everywhere. Names. Why would Say I? Say their names. Why would I? Tired of hearing about them. Why would I? Tired of hearing about them. Put them on first. You know the worst. Put them on first. Don't be like. You know the worst part. You know the worst part. Every every week I come. Every time I sit in this chair, dead ass, and I, I hate this because we talking about me now, and I don't want to. Every time I come in here, I could mention five new guys. 
It's not. It's not. It's never the same dude. What? Right. It's a bunch of dudes making the exact same. These they're heads. everywhere, bro. You're just not talking to them. They're the guys who run up to you asking to get put on that you keep it moving and you ignore them. Right. I, I don't talk to him, body, and I don't meet. I people. talk to him. Yeah, yes, you do. Because if you didn't, you would no, know I'm, who I'm, I'm talking about, and you would be, be as honest. frustrated as I am. I'm gonna be honest. I think that you run into him all the time because you keep talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> You're like manifesting these motherfuckers. No, no, they're no, coming no. to you, bro. Yo, peace, 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 peace. We got family in the building. What's up, man? Nice to see you again, bro. How you? What's up, baby? How you doing? Good. What's good? All right. What's good? What's good? All right. Everybody got a seat? I agree with Dito. Yeah. Because it's just like even being in prison, right? You had OGs tell you over and over again what not to do, how to move, this side of third. And when you're sitting in there, all that shit start registering. Yeah. And then it's on you to take to, to, yeah, you, to take on it and, and move forward. You're paying the price. Because right. what happens is when you're dealing with, when you got to remember... You're dealing with youth, young. Mm -hmm. They, they, they then, then when you think of a child, because a lot of times I see them, they be like, to him, and I be like, all right, let me see. Come here, let me talk to him. I be like, now you got to go deeper than him, because you know he ain't really been on the earth long enough. He ain't had seen much. He's 13, 14. He don't, he ain't get there yet. So you gotta mm -hmm. be like, you gotta go. Where's his parents? That's that's where you want to go, right to the source of the parents. Where he came from, who, where he lived at, in that environment. environment and that's right. going to set the tone right there. When you see the father, you see the mother, you might not see the father, you might just see the mother. And you could be like, there's the problem right there. Mm -hmm. Y'all keep saying the kid's the problem, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So we right. got to dig deeper than him. We know he did the crime. Right. We know he did everything. But he learned. But it. where did he come from? Yeah. Is where you got to go back to. And the first place you're going to go back to, whoever he lived with, his family, his aunt, his grandma. Whoever's raising them at that point, we need to talk to them mm -hmm. to see even how he's able to do this at 12 or 13 you without, you, without you saying something right. or, or hitting a red flag or something, saying something. He's outside at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. Ain't nobody make no phone calls. Right. He's supposed to hit the, the Ben hit the alarm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we blame him to a degree, but when he's under supervision and he, he got older people looking after him, we need to hold them accountable as well. Right. I don't blame anybody. I don't blame anybody because I don't know what they come from. Like you said, right, right, I don't right. blame nobody. I just accept the situation for what it is. Right, right. And then it's a matter of what I can do after this. Yes. Right? This is who he is. This is what it is. What can I do about it? My whole problem, the reason why I keep, you say because you keep manifesting them. You yeah, keep talking about them every episode. Because my, God. My, my, <laughs> I believe part of my purpose is to help right. them. Right. I think when I was working at the source, one of the reasons I wanted to do the unsigned hype so bad is because I wanted to find the next guy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That was part of my thing. I wanted to find that guy. I only got frustrated because I'm talking to your dumbass and you ain't him. And you in the way. And you made me think you was him. Right. And you are absolutely terrible. You don't listen. You hard-headed. You want to do what you want to do. You in the way. And you're taking my time from getting to the DMX. Who's him, though? DMX with D DMX is him. And that's DMX a, and was in the unsigned hype. No, he was no, one no, of the no. main unsigned hype And alumni. that's another 10 he's going to meet this week. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Ray, bring him on. Because as long as I get through to them to get to the guy, I think Shaw Summers is the guy. I, I totally believe that. I think Shaw Summers is the guy. You know how many dudes I had to, you know how many MCs I had, to, how many demos I had to throw out to get to Shaw Summers? Mm. I've been doing this show for how long? How long, wow. have you, how long have you talked to me about? How many demos have you thrown out? And I'm always like five or six, six or seven, yeah, yeah, yeah. seven or eight, right. just to find this one guy? Yeah. Mm. Now, in 2023, mm -hmm. I just find mm -hmm. this guy? Yeah, we're going to clip that out. We're going to clip that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a free promo. No, but even, even, on, <laughs> even, even on this show, I've discovered other talent that I've mentioned. Right. Uh, uh, the dudes who we had on the, um, the dudes who we had on the drop. Mm. Uh, uh, Coast Contra. Yeah. Them dudes. Coast and Contra. Uh um, um homeboy who who sat in with us, who who was going uh Simba. Simba. Simba's yeah, yeah. one. You didn't know I mean? You gotta go through all these dudes to find that one yeah. guy. Yeah. Not Simba. You don't hear about all them dudes. You only hear about the one guy, but the one guy didn't fall out of the sky. You had to go find him. Yeah, now that one good. guy that you talking about, how were you able to find like five of them? 
Word. You know, you, you know what it is because you have to know what artists you can work. See, it's not the artists. The artists are gonna do what you tell them. You gotta have the eyes and the ears for them. They just know how to rap. <laughs> Rapping, they know how to rap. You can give them any beat, they're gonna rap. You gotta be. What worked for me was that I was I was a CEO, but I was an A and R. I had an ear, mm -hmm. so I could be like, nah, 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 nah. That's not the flow. You got you gotta navigate while they in the booth because they just gonna rhyme. You gotta be like, nah, don't don't say that. Use your other tone. Flow like this. If you ain't doing all that and they doing it, they probably just gonna do the basics. Mm. So you gotta kinda know how to work the artists because it's different songs for different tones for different flows. Right. So you gotta do that and be there with them and then once they trust you, they're not gonna give you no rap. They just believe in you. You gotta make them believe in you like you believe in them. Mm -hmm. If, if y'all don't believe in each other, then it's probably not gonna work. True. True. So did you put um, Swiss Beats with DMX? You know what? Swiss popped up because Swiss was in Atlanta. Swiss is from the Bronx. Right. So what happened was um, he was in the Bronx. and he, no, he, he was in the Bronx, but then he went to Atlanta for a little while. Mm. And then he came back. And we had been dealing with X, and then they connected from there. Right. But, you know, we was in the studio. Who you being there? Grease being there. Or PK being there. A different lot of producers are being there. And he... He was just, when Swiss came, at that time, he was just really trying to, he was learning how to do all his beat stuff. And, right. But, you know, Greasem kind of knew, PK knew, and Swiss was, knew what he was doing a little bit because he was DJing first. Mm -hmm. And then he went to making beats, and then he just elevated with beats real quick because mm -hmm. he would um, he would stay with me when he came back from there, but he would never leave the, old, I mean, never leave the um, studio. Mm -hmm. I leave, he'd come home, he might come, Three days later, he's sleeping in the studio. He was he was um, very persistent on being successful at making beats. He would never come Absorbing home. everything. Absorbing yeah, all he, he just took it, he got it. And when he got it and it clicked, cause so he used to give us beats and I'd be like, nah, that ain't it right there, don't worry about that. He, <laughs> he went through that for forever. Now nah, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. Every morning I get up, he'd be like, here's 10 beats. And I'd be like, yeah, here's 10 beats, you can take those back. And then he'd go and then after a while, he'd be like, Okay, you almost got it. Mm. Then he then he just started getting it, you know, because he was he was working so hard that um, he was bound to get it because he was working. He he put the work in. Didn't nobody give it to him. Right. He put the work in. Did that you encourage Swiss hours. not to sample? <laughs> I mean, I ain't really say nothing to him about sampling. He he kind of probably did that himself because I wouldn't care if you sample or not. Just give me the beat, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll deal with that later. Yeah, my job is to finish the album. I don't care what beat you do, who you sample. Give it to me, make the song, let them deal with that when we get down the road. So, you know, so you see, the good part about that is if it's a sample and you give me a beat, once I got the verse, I can put another beat up under it. I just move a beat and figure another beat, I'll make another one and put it right up under it. All I need is the verse. Mm -hmm. The beats can be replaced 10 times. Mm -hmm. right, the right. verse is the problem. So once I give him a verse, I give him a beat. It might not be a beat that we keep, but we got the verse already. So mm -hmm. I don't care. I just put another beat up under there. The goal is to finish the song. That's it. There you go. I got we you. Need, we, need to, we need 15, 16 songs. That's all we need. So was Rough Rider Anthem the biggest record ever of that label? It probably, it probably was the biggest record on that label on the takeoff. Cause that's when we came in with the bikes. We, we we set the tone when nobody was doing it at that time. So we had bikes. We had the streets. You know, we had mm -hmm. the. We just had a, 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 a close attachments with the streets, and we was from the streets, so it was easy for us. It wasn't like we was niggas talking about they from the street and they buffer. That's what they say. But we was from there. We coming from there to do something to transition over to do something positive. We was really in the street. Right. Mm -hmm. So all we did was. The people that was with us supported us and we wanted to help us to do good, so everybody supported us. So who came up with Rough Riders? My brother came up with Rough Riders, my brother and I think my mother, because she said they was looking at a cowboy movie one night. And you know it's black Rough Riders, you know, if you ever yeah, they, 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 they seen yeah. it on that. She he told me they seen it on a um a late night TV show. And it was called The Black Rough Riders. Right. Something like the Rough Riders, but it was all black cowboys. Right. And that's where they got the idea from right there. 
So did, was there any pushback? Like, nah, yo, this condom is named Rough Rider. <laughs> no, you, you, it wasn't. It, it was. Uh, I mean, we we went through a little bit because somebody else had the name, and uh -huh. we had to go through a different. You know, we had to go back and forth and stuff like that. Change but the spelling. Yeah, yeah, you had to change this and change that. Still Rough Riders, but we had a different impact. You know. So so it, it, it worked for us, and they still got it too, but we still had it. When did you put the crew together? Because, you know, right now, Mace and the Locks are in Bad Boy. DMX is now here. We haven't gotten into Eve yet. But somehow, some way, all these pieces came together under one umbrella, which was Rough Riders as a label. Not was just it, was it in Mace show. that bought Eve to Rough Riders? Yeah, Mace discovered Eve you know, in the, in the you club. Know, you, you, know, you know how we met Eve? I met Eve. See, I was doing the A&R, so they got to bring it out here. Yeah. Jimmy, Eve had a deal with, with, with Dre. She was signed to Dre at that time. With oh, Jimmy Iovine. Wow. Over there, yeah. So oh, okay. she had a deal over there. And Dre and them was working it, but they wasn't really able to. I guess they, some people you can work with, some you can't. It doesn't matter how big of a, a producer you are. He just wasn't able to, to make it work for her. Right. So I was doing a deal with Jimmy. With, 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 with uh, probably X, the locks, and other us. And he was like, here, you could take, you know what, I got a girl. I said, all right, let me see her, send it to her. He, he sent her from Cali back over here to New York. We got a video of me in the studio and we started vibing. And I was like, we can work with her. Because you know, you just gotta, at that point, it's on you to know what you can work. If you're an a and I'm an A&R, so I know what I can make happen. I'll be like, I can't work this project. Mm -hmm. He told me you can work. I said, I can work her. He gave it to me, and I just worked it. You know, I just had to keep working and working and working her until she got it. Because, you know, she she was still not seasoned yet. She was right. just, a, just a good rapper. She had the energy. She was good, but it took a little minute. And then she got it. Eventually, she got it. So. Find, her, find her zone. Yeah, she had to find her. Yeah. her. So I, I just heard it. You said, if I can work on it, cool. Who were the people you turned down? Who were the people you said, nah, I don't know if I can do this? I mean, there's probably a lot of artists that I, I probably turned down from working. See? Yeah, yeah. Not just me. We yeah, ain't sitting here talking every episode about it. <laughs> He's not, <laughs> doing it. He's not yeah. here on every episode. <laughs> he, he was here on every episode. Here. <laughs> right. So what it, you don't remember anyone specifically I mean, mentioned? It was like, I passed on that, let me but see then it I became had. this. Well, I didn't pass on him. I just couldn't. I had my son, but I didn't pass on him. He just couldn't do nothing. Well, I passed on. My son was good, too. Yeah. I just couldn't get him at that time. He was on Violator. Yeah, he was on another. He was, he, he was working with uh, on Violator. Yeah, Chris Ivey. Shout, shout out to Eric Nix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris. Shout out to Eric Nix. God bless the dad. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, but it, it was, um, I'm trying to think of the top because I was too busy trying to stay focused on them. I wasn't really entertained. You don't want to take too many, because then it ain't going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just work with this right here. This is enough. If they did come, I wouldn't even recognize them, because I had to finish this right here. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure I delivered these albums. So I just stayed on to the five that I knew that I could work real quick, and I put a lot of time in. And, and I really paid attention to different artists. I just had to stay focused on the artists that we was working on. OK, so Rough Riders is beginning to grow. Going through the roof. I actually wanted to spin it back. There was something I missed asking. When the when the locks were campaigning to get off of Bad Boy, how did that affect your relationship with Puff? No, I mean, that was between them and him. It wasn't between me and him. We still had our rapport, you know. And they was going through their little, that was business, you know, it's just business. It's nothing I could do about that. It's not like it's a, a beef with me and him. It's business, you know, they don't want in, you know. And what happened was me and Puffer's family, you know, like it's a difference. I could go in the room and be like, look, this is what we're going to try to do. They don't want to be here. I mean, what are we going to do to try to figure this out? So me and him went through, we talked and then we figured out X, Y, and Z. And he released them because, you know, Puff don't release nobody. 
Yeah. You'll sit there until you get crutches. It was tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to be in a wheelchair fucking with Puff. <laughs> you're going to be 90 years old. I'll let you go when you're 90. <laughs> but, but, he, but he was family with me, so me and him came into an um, understanding and we agreed on. You know, I said, let them go. You know, I raised them, you know. So for me, it's a little different because I took them to school. I watched them grow. So I was like, you know, um, do the favor. So he did me that favor and released them to me. With pay, though, you know, it should probably cost me about two million. I don't know how much it cost, but yeah. mm. it was something like that. That we had to pay him like two million and then he released them. And that's when we was with uh, Jimmy Abbey and them, so they paid it. We got them over and then we was able to work them from there. That's the only reason why they got away. Cause my my go. question hold on, hold on, hold on. is, we're going to take a five minute break. All right. You know, sometimes on the show, we take a break. We start to hear the most interesting stories. And sometimes I get caught up in it and I'll be like, oh, yeah. And they, this is the, but then we start again and it's like, damn, we missed that. You know what I mean? In this particular moment, you was talking about the day that Leo Cohen, matter of fact, rewind back Irv Gotti's role right. in DMX and getting signed to, to Def Jam. How, what was your relationship with Irv Gotti? Irv was, um, he, he's, um, he was one of our producers that we was working with before he, you know, he was just a good producer. He was from Queens. Right. So he used to come to Yonkers all the time. So he worked with X and we was working in there. He knew about X before the world knew because he was one of the ones that worked with us. It was uh, Irv, Grease, PK, Swiss, just different people was working. But right. Irv was, a, was from Queens and he knew him. But he happened to get a job at Def Jam. That was after Ja Rule got signed. No, this was before Ja Rule. Mm. Mm. This was before Ja Rule. Mm, right. So he had um got a job at Def Jam. He was doing um A and R work over there. And they kept telling them, um, they must have asked him, well, you got an artist you believe in? He was like, Yeah, I got an artist. And he was talking about X. But they didn't know X at that time. So he was like, you know, I got an artist, you know his name is DMX, but da but you know, and he, and, he, and, he, and he must have said, you know, he growled, did it out. And he was like, oh, oh, oh come on, what are we, 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 don't, we ain't into the dog business. <laughs> right, right. He said, we're not into the dog business, you know, we, we, we don't feel like buying dog food, so they crack them <laughs> They're joking on them hard, heavy. Right. So he got, he had got upset and he quit. He quit over he quit. that? Yeah, because they was, you know, they wasn't respecting his, right. his, his ear. ear. Right. So he's like, I'm telling you, he's nice. He's one of them. They was like, oh, we don't want to hear that. I mean, come on. So whatever it is, he quit. And I, I guess he quit for a little bit. And then Leo went back and got him and was like, no, no, come on back. Don't worry. It's all right. So he went back. He was working. Everything was working. So I guess he panned it out with Leo. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to take you up there. And it was about maybe a couple of weeks later after he got his job, he pops up at the studio. And we was in the studio. He called and said, yo, I'm bringing um, Leo up there. I was like, all right, bring him. You know, we had asked everybody, kids, everybody was in there. So he um, came in the room, and we playing him all type of different stuff. And, you know, he was like, you know, everything is good, but where's, where's X? So X was sitting over there. He wasn't really doing nothing. He was just sitting there. And I was like, he right here. You know, and I was like, X, come here for me. So he came. And, and, and at this time, we had uh, was doing some music with him. And Leo was like, you know, let me hear something. I was like, so I put that, put the beat on. So, so he's rhyming. X is like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. That. He rhyming. He doing what he do. He was like, ah, you know, you know, it ain't too much impressive more than anybody else. I mean, it's good, good rap and good stuff. He wasn't really too crazy. But he was like, ah, oh, you know, I, I like it. It's okay. It's not too. But, but the twist was when he was rhyming. He's rhyming like I'm talking like right now. Clear, you can't hear nothing. So I was like, come here for a minute. So he came. He had just had a situation. And I was like, here, I opened his mouth. He had a cage on his mouth. It was George Wyatt. But he was rhyming like I'm talking. So you couldn't tell it's George Wyatt. Right. He was mm -hmm. like, okay, let's, now we can, that's what kind of got him the deal when he opened his mouth and his George Wyatt shut. 
Mm. But he was talking, rhyming like I'm rhyming. DMX so. rapped for Leah Corn with a wired shut jaw and yeah. sounded like he was regular. Just talking. like me and you talking. Yeah. I couldn't tell the difference. Spirit of God was in him. You didn't know that his jaw was wired. Wow. wow. But mm. that kind of impressed Leo at that time when he opened his mouth and he seen his mouth was wired shut. He was like, okay. So he, he that was more impressive than the rhyme. And, he, mm. and, and from there, DMX got signed. Yeah, we got a deal and we worked and we just. And, and those guys that laughed at Irv Gotti got fired. They probably, I don't even, Irv, Irv, you know what? They probably put Irv in a higher position over them guys. Yeah, right. So they worked for him. Right, right. So Irv was here and, and, and he brought X to the table. So we did, um, we had uh, his first, we did his, um, we did his um, album. We did his first album. What was it Darkest Hell is Hot? One? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, Darkest Hell is Hot. So we gave him that album. We gave him that album. No buzz. So he sold five million on that album. Yeah, little buzz. Little buzz. Right. <laughs> little some buzz. light. Some yeah. light. Come on, <laughs> dude. Yeah, little buzz to him. He sold was, five million. He, you know? he, he sold five, but that was like big back that then. That was very, very big. big. Back then. Speak mm. now. The only other, <laughs> yeah. the only other right person that now. did that at the label was Jay Z. He was the only yeah. other person that did that. And then he went and did time. it again. Yeah, and then, then later on that same he year, did it, he did it again the same year. We told he did. We dropped two albums in one year. Yeah, yeah. my flesh, blood, and he blood. told another five million. So he sold ten million that year. Mm. So that's, that's diamond, what, right? Yeah, yeah. Diamond, yeah. yeah. No, so five one five, project. One project, ten. but then yeah. um, first he put them together. Yeah, ten no. million, ten million, million worth. Five he million. did diamond he worth. Did diamond oh, worth, but it's not diamond. Yeah. Well, oh. but he um, he dropped. There was you know he dropped. Did five million, then did another one, five more million. And then so that's, he did, and then there was X in two thousand. Yeah. Now, now Jay Z's told a story about going on tour with you guys. <laughs> and how how you know he had to problem his game up <laughs> after DMX would get out there and perform like he had to figure out right I heard it yeah well what was it like going on tour that was the hard knock life this, tour right this, mm -hmm. yeah this is was it the was it the hard knock yeah that, that was it, it was, was it was a rough ride in the Rockefeller tour or was it hard rough riders yeah. Rockefeller yeah no, I think it was one rough of the riders and cash money. That was the first one. That was with yeah, Baby. Then and the I'm, second one then was we Hard did Knock Life. Hard Knock. Yeah, yep, we yeah, did that yep. one. That one was when X and Hove, we, we was trying to figure out who would go last. Who was co headline Yeah, yeah. The right. goal was this. Who's Because the, they was always going back and forth, X and uh, Hove. They didn't really get along. He thought he was better. X thought he was better. And this goes all the way back to the battle in the Bronx. On that pool mm. table. That's where it all well, started. You there for that? Yeah, I was there. All right, tell us. Tell us why. <laughs> yeah, tell us why. This is how the battle it. went. It wasn't even, it wasn't even an X and it wasn't even an X and J battle. It was a cipher that turned into a battle. It was, it was my, a friend of mine's, mm -hmm. Mac. He lived in my building. He had um, his group and Hove was a part of the original flavors. Right. So they was rhyming. He was on that side, and my guy Mac had a group of artists that was from where we was from, but you know, Mac used to come with us. So he called me and was like, yo, come over here right quick and bring X. But we wasn't really trying to battle, they just said bring them so you can see. But the uh, original favorites was battling the um, Harlem Knights. So they was battling. So what happened was they stopped battling, they got in gridlock, so they took Hove and put them on the table, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But you know, X wasn't supposed to be there. I just happened to bring him there. He would have crushed them if they didn't have X because they had backup. Right. Dame had Dame had hold right over there. So he said it was getting out. He said, I know I'm gonna wait till after a couple of rounds, and then I'm gonna put Hove on the table. And then by that time he knew that what they had wasn't gonna be able to uh make them win the battle. Right. But they didn't know it. we bought X and we snuck him in, and he just came with me. Right. It wasn't. They, they didn't know that X was there. Was there money on the line? No, it wasn't no money on the line. It was more for the uh, uh, the sake of the saying who's the best. Right. But they would have won if we didn't come with X, because the uh, Harlem Knights wouldn't have been able to stand once Jay got on the table. So Loki, you saying y'all won? 
We say we won, they say they won. So we won. So how did X get in the pit? <laughs> wait, how did X get in the pit? How did that even work out? Wait, so how did, how did X even get, get on the so car to even battle? Huh? Did X battle at that event? Yeah, he battled yeah, because he battled what, what happened was Jay got on the table, right? They put Jay, but they don't know X is there. They thinking it's just them, the regular people that's around. X had came in with me. He was standing over there. He don't even know he's battling. And I was like, oh, he put him on the table. I was like, all right, come here. I said, put X on the table. And we put X on the table. There's no footage. They, they, they went yeah, you know footage. what? There There's was footage. a little bit of There's footage. footage. A little something. I think Dame got a little bit because I spoke to him not too long ago. He might have a little bit, but I think they turned the camera off. They didn't get a lot of it. Somebody, it's, it's, somebody it's, was losing. No, it's all the cameras went off. It's your old and grainy, but you can you can it's, yeah. and it's like at a weird angle. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's somebody, no footage. They probably got a little bit, but it wasn't the, what we would have wanted to be able to determine who won. But they yeah. both was nice, so you know what it was. And we was in there. And they was rhyming for about two hours straight. Definitely. And this is happened. before. Not even one of them was on. Wow. Nobody had a deal yet. That's Nobody crazy. had a deal. But but, <laughs> but they both. That's, crazy. That's legendary. That was that was. That's crazy. Neither one of them had a deal at this moment when we was in the Bronx. Nobody had a deal. They believed in they believed in hope, and we believed in that. So we just we just went there, and and, and it worked. It just. They was both good to me. I say it was it was a draw because they both was nice. You know, right. we couldn't just say he's nice. He's nice. it wasn't like that. It was like I I, I just got to say both of y'all nice. Is that is that uh that competition between uh, Jay Z and DMX what sparked the Rough Riders Rockefeller uh, back and forth? What the what the what the little yeah Kiss Beans. And just the whole everybody battling. Well, right song with back. Jada and, and Ho. That's what. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> we got the source sitting right here. <laughs> that's, but that's where it started. We don't need Jay so right now. Oh Lord, oh, I need. Lord. To, I need to find out what, what what it was from him. With with with, with X and Ho. With, 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 with Jada Kiss and Beanie Siegel. The Jada how did, Kiss. How did all that start? Just a Rough Rider Rockefeller clash. I mean, we we was always good with with them. I think they got into it because it wasn't a Rough Rider. It wasn't a Rough Rider, a Rockefeller beef. Mm -hmm. It was more of a Jada and Beanie beef. You see, mm -hmm. the artist was beefing, not us. The label wasn't beefing. It was them. The mm -hmm. the artist was beefing. Right. So they had a little misunderstanding. I forgot how it started, but they was going back and forth, taking shots at each other. Right. And um, that that's, that was going on for a little while. And, and what happened was, because it was about to get to that, it was getting ready to get out of hand. You know, somebody going to get hurt eventually because mm -hmm. it was getting to that point. Right. So, you know, if you, if you, you know, being them from Philly, and, you know, Philly, they kind of like, they go there. Yeah. Like, they, they come from that. Like, they mental is... A little different because you know, I lived in both places, so they they gonna go there eventually. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what, we gotta we gotta try to squash this beef so it don't escalate because it's gonna go to the guns one thousand percent. Because they just my Philly niggas, they kind of aggressive on the ignorant. They don't even think they be like it, it was the, depending on who caught who at right. the right place. Right. But what happened was the good part is that. I called my barber and I was I was in the house one day and he was like, D, what's up? I was like, what's up? He was like, um, Beans and them is in the park. They was over here. And I was like, where they at? He was like, over, oh, are they right up here on um, River, Riverbank? He was at Riverbank. And I was like, all right, I'll be right there. Because I'm, I'm from Philly too because my grandma was there, so I know a couple of the guys that run with them. So I shot to the park. I went down there to talk to Beans and, uh, Sadiq was with him. So him and Sadiq, and he was managing him, I guess, at the time. I said, you know, we're just trying to make sure this don't escalate. And Kiss wasn't there yet. So I was like, all right, hold on, wait a minute. So I called Kiss. He said, yo, where you at? He said, I'm in the crib. I said, all right, jump in the cab, come to the park right quick. Jump in the cab, we come to the park. So I tell him, look, we're going to go in here, deal with this. So, you know, uh, try to squash this so it don't escalate, because if it depends on who catch who, where they catch. So they would have caught them over there. It would have probably been different. Because right. they don't think. You know, we thinking, they ain't thinking. Right. So they went over there. 
They talked a little bit over there in the corner. They they kind of reserved it and resolved it and shook hands and, and um, they squashed it and left it alone, you know, because at that point, it ain't no longer they beef. It's our beef now because you said you wasn't going to do nothing and you caught them over there and you did something other than what you said right. when we could have did what we wanted to do while we got you right here. Mm -hmm. right. So we let you go and you can't do, now you catch them over there in Philly, you can't do that. You do that, then that's a different beef. Right. You know, we kept it 100 with you and that's the way you got to keep it. So they kept it 100 and it was, you know, I think Bean said that on an interview not too long ago that, that we had that situation, but we was able to resolve it so it don't escalate, so it was cool. Freeway yeah. spoke on it when he was yeah. here. Freeway spoke on it. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, he said the exact same thing. Wait, no. Styles spoke on no. it too. No. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm From, glad that was resolved, though. That, were you enjoying it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that was D, were you enjoying it in the meanwhile? Was it like a battle for you or you were like, what's what, what's going on here? How does this even start? I, I, I don't even, you know, I don't even like beef like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd rather it just be what you are because for me, yeah, I raised all of them. I watched them come up so I know ain't nobody shooting. You ain't busting your gun. You ain't no shooter. All around you can say whatever it is. That's not what it is. But it sounds good. So Greg, get your money, do what you do. Now, it's a different from rhyming and living it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when you see us getting ready to get to the gun part, you got to come in and intercept so it don't get to that. Mm -hmm. And shut it down quick because I know you're not a shooter and I know you're not a shooter. You might have one or two with you, but you're not a shooter. I tell them, I tell them all the time, I say, you know what? Give me 10 rappers, run all their records, and they probably all got clean records. Cause they're not from that. They just put the words together. They don't go to jail until after they get the deals. <laughs> True story. Bro. Which is re fucking ridiculous. That's a fact. <laughs> they backwards. Oh, they get. They go to jail after. <laughs> after. <laughs> that don't make no sense. It's crazy. You made it. You made it. You got money. You're good. And now you go to jail and you get 25 years after you made it out of the, the, the hardest part of your life. Right. Because they're trying to portray the image of the people in the street that they seen when they was growing up. Right. So they want to be that to a degree, you know, no that's, matter how much money you get. That's Yeah, when they go back to the neighborhood, you know, I'm, I'm, and you know, people in the hood, they just know you for who you are. I grew up with you. Mm -hmm. You know, went to school with you. I know you was never none of that. I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. Now, I'm just telling you, I used to beat you up all the time, take your lunch. <laughs> Remember me? I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm security guard. You got I'm just telling you what I used to do to you. Right. So you got to be real to a degree, but but then yeah. they start living a um a fantasy world. Yeah. They start believing they something they not, and they go buy a gun and they think they they want to be that guy that was on the that that really lived that life and got a hundred years. They try to live his life indirectly when they should just go that way. Yeah. Keep going that way. Yeah, just go that way. You made it past it. Don't backtrack. And now you get caught up with a gun. Now they go to they always go to gun go to jail getting caught with a gun because they want to be like them. No, because in their hearts, in their heads, they're still the kid who used to get beat up for their lunch money. There you go. And they don't want to get beat up for their lunch money anymore. Mm -hmm. And now they got so much more lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so lunch money for, much, for everybody. So much more yeah, lunch money. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, yeah. guys like you are still walking around out there who used to beat them up and take their lunch money. Yeah. Now, they don't know that you stop taking people's lunch money. Yeah. They don't know that you stopped that. They just know that that was the rough part. They don't want to go do go that. They're just not going to take my lunch money no more. Yeah, so yeah. next time you try, it's going to be different. Yeah, I'm, I'm big I'm big now. I got yeah. a gun now. I'm, 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 I'm somebody. somebody. Yeah, now we can fight and it's going to yeah. be a little more even. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. stop it taking people's lunch yeah, money. Yeah. 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 Don't take their lunch money. You know, but, but, but for me, with my people, it's like I'm more of a giver. Like my job is to, to give and help, period. Like I always that. give. Like I've been doing that since I was little. So the more I get, the more I give. That's just how I, that's my motto. Right. If I can help somebody, I'm gonna do it. I don't even gotta know them. And that's what you're supposed to do. You know, you gotta know that um, God bless you enough to be able to give. Does your giving nature backfire when it comes to business? The music industry is not really a great place when it comes to being a giver. And you've been in, 
you've been in situations with your own artists yeah. where the business deals have gone left for for your guy specifically. Do you attribute that to your given nature? I, I would I would assume, just to clear it up, I would assume that somebody who has a given nature is used to coming to the table with the best of intentions. 100%. I'm gonna do business. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my best foot forward. I'm gonna do good business with you. I'm gonna shake your hand. My my, you know, it doesn't take paperwork. I'm gonna trust you to do what you say you're gonna do because I'm gonna do what I'm what I say I'm gonna right. do. Right. So when you come to the when you come to the table like that, there are people who take advantage. Your artist specifically, you dealt with not not, not just in business but also in personal life. Do you think maybe being a giver has been to your detriment? I mean, it, I could say for some people, it probably, depending on the deal, you know, and how it's set up and structured, it, it, it could be like you probably took less when you should have took more mm -hmm. or you deserve more. Because let me tell you about artists, when you really, really work a project, and, and, and I heard what you said, and artists just don't give a fuck, <laughs> technically. Like, they, they for self. Right. Until they get to a certain point and they might think about it later. But you got to remember, you're dealing with a bunch of kids that come from minority areas, hungry, poor. They don't know. So when they get over there and the white man pull them in that room and tell them, look, this is what you do. This is what you got. Blah, blah, blah. And they don't know. So they they know you. So they're probably going to listen to him. And that's where the tug of war comes now, you know, mm. because they listening to him. And you've been with him 10 years. He only talked to him for eight months. Mm. So he can start getting in their brain and making things swerve a little. That's why no matter what you do, no matter what you put your time into and spend your money for that you might never get back because not everybody going to make it, you got to have it on your contract, period. If you don't got paperwork, you're wasting your time. So where, where was that thought process? And I'm, I'm going to be blunt here. The, the locks wanting to get off of bad boy complaining about their deal you're their management so it would it would it would seem to be that you oversaw that deal and you were okay with it when you saw it but here they are beefing about it they angry the deal yeah, I, I, it, they I would assume you did no nah, you know what i didn't handle the 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 the, 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 the deals and i did the music i focus on music strictly. i see i see. i don't i see paperwork lawyers y'all do that so, so, so what happened was you have to know what position to take. This is the most important position when you want to do music. And I don't know nothing about music technically at this point when I'm coming in. So I pull Puff to the side. And I was like, you know, he was doing big and I was doing that. I was working with him with Mace and the locks. And I was like, you know, if I had to take a position in this music industry, what would be a good position to take? And he was like, you know what? He was at the board. Matter of fact, we was on 44th Street in the studio. He was like, if, if, if I was you, I would learn how to do the music. And I was like, okay, got it. And, and that's where you become valuable because the artists connect with you and them is a chemistry that helps them become a star. They're not a star because they just walk in. You have, to, you have to make the right records. You have to have the right image. And you have to know how to work the project. You know what I'm saying? They in the booth. We out here. Our ears is clearer than theirs. You got to tell them, do that over 10 times. Say that over. You got to do it again. You got to do it again. You got to do it again. And, and that, that I remember I, I, I probably had Styles in the booth one time. He was getting frustrated. He was like, all right, I don't want to do this no more. I'm not rapping no more. <laughs> you know, because he, he just getting frustrated. But then he get mad. He go back and do it again. But that's what it takes sometimes. And that's just for one song. Mm -hmm. All night, might not get it that night, got to come back the next day and do it again. Because it's, it's just sometimes it's like that. Right. So it, 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 it's, it's a lot to do with your team. Very important. There's not no one man can do it. It's just, it's impossible for one man to do it. It doesn't work. So, so, so you avoided the business and stayed with the booth. Yeah, you know what? Which is not a good thing neither, because you should know a little bit of the business as well. Which I didn't know that until way later. And so the business wasn't intact like I sh it probably should have been. Because I didn't, I never was in New York. I always would be in California. I'd be in Miami. 
I would be in uh, Arizona. So I would be different places doing albums, just completing albums. So I was never here. Right. So I just kept mm -hmm. on working and working. And that was just my job is to deliver the albums. It, it wasn't, they didn't tell me about, you know, you got to do this meeting. It was just deliver the album. We got 15 more days. You got to deliver mm -hmm. the album. I just had to make my date, give them the album, and then get on the next album. Mm -hmm. So, so that 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 was okay. Spending that much time with the artist, right? Mm -hmm. Putting these albums together. <clears throat> Dmx. His troubles are broadcasted. Every not broad, but well known. His, right, right, people, right, right. People know what he went through, what he was going through. Yeah. And you were there for his upbringing. You, you saw him from this to this. Right, right. Being somebody who was on the front lines for that part of his life when he was developing these bad habits that were only getting worse, was there ever a time when you could have stepped in? Do you ever flash back and think, I should have said something? I could have said something. Or did you say something and get ignored? How did that go? Well, when it came to X, you, he was the type of artist that, you know, we always said something like, it's not, it's impossible for me not to say, look, mm. now this is what you're doing, my man. And, and, you know, and when you are, under the influence of something, that supersedes whatever nobody's saying. If you're addicted to something, it's like, that's like, we was lucky we even made it that far, but we had so much belief and faith and drive. We mm -hmm. had the drive that he wasn't even paying, but it was all our drive that drove it. Because right. mm -hmm. if it was up to him, he would have went this way. We had to go back this way, let's go this way. Back this way, let's go that way. All right, we gotta go away for three months. You just gotta keep going because we believed in him that much that we knew what he was before he knew what he was. Right. Mm -hmm. like I was like, he's, mm. you know, I, I, my sister said one time, she was like, um, you know what? You're wasting your time. This guy's on this, he's a mess and all that. Just, I said, no, 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 no. Let me just walk this dog and I'm gonna I'm I'm ride it out and see what happens. And I just never gave up on him. Like it didn't matter what he was going through. No matter how many times I had to go get him out of bad situations. No matter how many times this, that, I just knew what he was because I worked with him every day. Like, I worked with him. You can say that if you don't work with him. If you see him once a month mm -hmm. or once every other week, you really don't know him. You got to be like this with him every day. And he was the type of artist that the only good part about him is that he had a great memory. Like, I, would, I wouldn't have to really... So I had him for like eight years, probably before he even got a deal, maybe even longer. But we used to always write rhymes, so I used to play with him and be like, all right, since he was the one that worked, I said, you know what? Every rhyme you give me, I'll give you $100. Hmm. So he was like, all right. So he'll bring me three, four rhymes. Three more, three more the next day, three more the next day. So by that time I was finished, I had 25 songs already. And the only good part is that his memory was so great that I could just say a little bit of the verse. You hold my hand while he's doing it. He'd be like, oh, I remember that rhyme. I'd be like, say the whole rhyme. He'd say the whole rhyme. I'd be like, go on the booth and say it. And he'd go on the booth and say, I just recorded. Was the goal to keep him busy, to keep him out of trouble? <laughs> yeah, was, the that, goal was, was that the plan? The goal was to keep him out of trouble 100% because if you keep him busy, then you don't really have no time to get in trouble. Right. But X was the type that he would find time. See, it was, it was a time, you know what? It was a time for him that, see, this is what it is with artists. See, when you meet an artist, most of the time, they're probably not gonna have much of anything. Money, income, they're just gonna be dependent on you and you the provider and everything. So you're doing everything for them. You give them the money, you buy them up, you're helping them. You do everything for them. So you got the, that's the most time you're gonna have control. Now, let a song stick, stick, let a song stick, and they get a little buzz, they get a little, mm -hmm. they, get, they, they start feeling themselves. Now they turn into another person. Because they have That's, access. Yeah, they'd they be like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a star, man. So they, 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 they be hard, they're a little bit difficult to deal with because they become, you, you know, it's easy to talk to a person that's, uh, less fortunate, you, that's not the real person. The poor person that's not fortunate is not the real person. person. That's the humble person because he has no choice but to be humble. Right. Mm -hmm. He don't have nothing. Let him make some money. 
Let him get a couple of dollars in his pocket. There's your guy right there. That's the real guy. He gonna tell you, just be quiet, I'm talking right now. <laughs> and that's the real person gonna come out. The quiet one is the one that's poor, he ain't got no money, he relying on you for everything, you're doing everything for him, he's not gonna say nothing. You're gonna play the quiet, you're gonna take all the abuse you can give him, but when he get the money, he might turn into another person. But I, I didn't really have that problem with my artists because they respected me differently. Like they know I had money already. I was buying them clothes and stuff way before music. I just give them money because I had it. So I would take care of them, make sure they go to school, take them to school, help them do everything we could do to make sure they was all right. right. But it was about the respect, you know? If it wasn't no respect, then we probably wouldn't have got nowhere, nowhere. It wouldn't have matter who was nice. It wasn't more so about the rap. Nigga, you ain't gonna talk crazy here, ever. So, mm -hmm. and I wanna do it to you neither. So if it wasn't no respect, then we probably wouldn't have had no deal, no music, everything would've just went out the window. But but they, you know, I raised them, I watched them come up, I took them to school. I got to do all them things with them. So when when they got a situation with Puff, I had to step up to the plate because they like my little brothers. Right. So I was like, you know, no, 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 no. We ain't gonna be able to do the, whatever you did with all the other people. It's, we're going to have to figure this out. You know, me and you as family, they family, I kind of raised them. I need to figure out what we can do to get them off because they're not comfortable. Right. He was like, you know, well, you know, we can get them off, but, you know, just give me a couple of million. So we had to give them a couple of million and they let them off and we just took them from there. That's just what it was. Mm. From that moment, mm -hmm. Rough Riders, the label, it was like, it's on while out drops. There you go. Everyone's anticipating this locks album that's away from Bad Boy. Yeah. They're thinking that the first track is specifically for Buff. Exactly. What was that first? What was the first rock? Fuck you. <laughs> that was the first yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. If you hope we yeah, wanna make it. I was like, go ahead, fuck it, throw it up. But it was for him. <laughs> <laughs> it was wasn't for him. It was for him and whoever else was. Right. <laughs> you know, it, 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 that's how they felt at that time. Even though they love him and they're good now. Yeah. But that's how they that's how they felt. Right. I was like, go oh, make. I can't tell you what to make, that's your crap. And that's when they wrote, yeah. You thought we wouldn't make it fuck you. Hard for the hatred when they fuck you, yeah. and that was you know, it's for say who you know. You, you want me to put your name in there? I ain't put your name in there. We did that. They did. They just said it, and that's the way they felt. It was like no more shiny suits. Yeah, they said it. They did, did it. say that, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. your answer right there. Yeah. And Jada Kids did it on blood pressure. Uh, 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 he said, "When you see me, don't ask me nothing about us. And you definitely don't, don't ask, ask me, me nothing, nothing about, about Puff." Yeah, he said puff, didn't he say puff? Nah, he didn't say puff. Blanked it out. Nah, he blanked it out. Oh, you know what? I probably bleeped yeah. it when we was editing. Right. Because yeah. I ain't want, yeah, I think we probably just bleeped that little part. No, the main song was, um, no, we ain't fucking with them no more because we rough riding. Get it out your head now. LOX is back now. That yeah. one. Yeah. That was the main diss record. Yeah, yeah. But the whole, the whole yeah, album, album, album yeah, I crazy. felt like there's little pieces all they, over it. Yeah, they had a bunch of little shit all over the album. Right. That shit was fire. Because they, they just got off, and that was the album they did as soon as they got off. Right. And and mm. we had signed them, and they just made a bunch of songs. And It was going crazy. And then we could do it. I was like, all right, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so now Rough Riders is official. You got you got the locks. You got X. Uh, you got Eve. You got Dragon. It's a whole crew now. Whose fault was it that they signed that deal? Which one? Who do you blame? On um, which deal? The locks deal with, with Puff. Whose fault was it that they signed a contract that they were so pissed about this many years later? Whose fault was it? Who was it? I don't even I don't even know if we was managing them that at that time. We probably was. If, if it was us, it would probably be us and the lawyer or whoever the lawyer was. Because the lawyers really handle it. We manage them, we ain't scanning papers and shit. Wow. You, you, you tell me, I'll be like, all right, we'll get that, you got it, you got it. So we probably would have to see who was representing them at that time. Did, did the wise. contract get looked at or was it presented and it has signed? to be. It has it, to they be, got right? it, they have to look at it and they have to agree on it too. So, you know, it's not like you just agree, but they probably don't know that much at that point. It was right, young. Right, 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 right. They're right, going right, to say right. yeah to anything because they just want to, they just want to get a goddamn deal. They don't care what it is. Right. They don't know this, 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 uh, that stipulates this and that stuff gonna bite you later. They don't know none of that. All I know is I got a deal, I got a little advance, and we on. We over here with Biggie. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. 
Right. I'm with Big. Too. That's it. That's not there. You ain't gonna tell me nothing. I'm with Big. Yeah. I don't care what that contract says. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but here, I'm baby. Until it's time to care about what that contract says. Right. Hold yeah. on. I got. A, I got a question, D. So you had. Is this true that they that um either you or your brother play a card game with DMX Me. for a certain record that he refused to rap on? Yeah. And what what record was that? Like uh, tell that story. We was in we was in Maryland. What record was that? We was in Maryland, and we play, we play casino right. all the time. Mm-hmm. So he he likes to, he liked to gamble, and he you know he really can't, he couldn't beat me in that game. He ain't doing enough time. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> a jail game right there. <laughs> he ain't gonna be able to beat me in this, but I know he ain't gonna beat me. So I couldn't get the song out of him. Mm. He wasn't trying to move. We was up. It was two in the morning, and I was like, Yo, we gotta do this song. We gotta finish this. We gotta finish this up. And it might have been the anthem. It might have been, been the anthem. It might have been the anthem. Because he didn't want to do it. Oh, I don't want to do it. You know, X was rebellious. I ain't doing nothing. I was like, oh, you want to play? So I took the cards. I was like, now, we can play, but if you lose, you got to go. And if I lose, I'll give you X amount of money. He was like, all right. But I know he's going to lose because he don't really know how to play that good. So I just played him and he lost. And then we went and did the song about, it was about, um, Four in the morning, it was worth that anthem for sure. Fire 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 that's that was that's how that Rough came Rock about. That's crazy. Bro, right. listen, you want to do it. So I had a homeboy nope. that was interning in Def Jam. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna say his name because he definitely got the album before it came out. Right, right. And he brought it to the hood mm-hmm. and he played it for me. And I remember hearing the anthem and being like, yo, this is Nah, son, this is gonna be crazy. This right, right, right. Is gonna drop. This is gonna be crazy. That in the intro, I was like, yo, yeah. Stu X is like, he's the truth. The yeah. Originally, originally, um, uh, somebody's knocking, should I let him mm-hmm. in? Originally, the chorus was, somebody's knocking at the door, somebody's, somebody's ringing, ringing the bell, bell. do me a favor. Table. Open the door and let him in. The Beatles record. The original. That was, was original. That. Oh, that's what you mean. Oh, okay. oh right. that's, that's, that's the that original. From, right. And then I guess you guys changed it because yeah, it was yeah, the Beatles we switched. Record. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that's the that's melody. So wild. DMX yeah. didn't want to do Rough Riders Anthem. Biggie didn't want to do Juicy. Like, what the. They yeah, right? And, and Havoc hated Shook One. And Havoc hated, <laughs> Havoc hated <laughs> Shook One. It's yeah, crazy. they don't. They don't you know what? Because artists don't have that vision. Mm-hmm. They just know that they can rhyme. So that's why it's important to have a good team and good ears and a and Because the most big songs, they probably not going to want to do. I don't want to do that song. I don't like it. It's not for you. Let me get this one. And you can have the other three. Right. And you give them the other ones. But you know this is the big one. Right. As long as you can get them to the song. Because the big songs, for some reason, they just don't. Want to do them? They'd be like, I don't want to do that, so I don't like it. It's not for you. It's for them. It's for me. I got to say it for me or them. It's for the people, <laughs> not for you. Just give them one. Right. Ah, he forgot I'll do it. And then he did, but he did that song because he lost. Because <laughs> <laughs> he lost in the casino. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, months <laughs> later, when that song is like the biggest song everywhere, do you turn around and be like, see? <laughs> yeah, you know, he got he to hear that, you know, yeah. it'd be like, whatever we said to him at that point, you know, mm-hmm. he, he probably didn't care at that point because that was bringing the money. So, right. I, yeah, I see, I'm clear. He, he can admit now because he's making money and it was it was just a big song. Right. So, he, 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 he had to go with the flow, you know. But that time we was on another album. Mm. Now, you got the team. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but uh, BT launched a, a bracket for the top, the, the the greatest rap crew of all time. What's the bracket? What's the bracket? A. Trust me. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, Rough Riders is on the list versus, what's it at? Bad Boy. 
What's your take on this? What? Like, how do you, you feel like you guys are going to beat Bad Boy? or It's kind of confusing for me because I got to wonder how you, right, how how you, you count on the out. locks. Yeah. The, are yeah. the locks Bad Boy or they roughed it? I mean, you really can't. They probably got their careers real launch after we got them and got them to the next level as far as them being who they wanted to be. Right. Who he had them was a different vibe a little bit. So when they got back here, that's when they did We Are The Streets and all that. That's them. Okay. Lots so, is in a definitely. win-win situation right there. You heard yeah, yeah. kind of, kind of. But no, I think they, they'll definitely want to be counted you gotta leave as Mr. Rough Riders. Riders. Yeah, yeah, you got to mm. leave them as Rough Riders. Okay. Riders Riders way more records on Rough Riders, Riders than Bad Boy. Yes. Who's, way who's, more records. Whose mm. chains did they wear? Rough Riders. Exactly. Yeah, you, it is. You ask them, who, what label did they fight to get off and what label did they fight to get back to? And <laughs> when, when, when did their career start propelling? That's subjective, when, but... I believe it was when we were and, and, and you have a you have a point. I'm not saying you're wrong. That's there's definitely an but argument still, to be made. At the but end of the day, it's in a win-win situation. <laughs> it was on both labels. If you ask them who they yeah. with, they're gonna say Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. I believe yeah. if you ask them who they with, they're gonna who say Who did they start off with? <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then go back to <laughs> and then yeah, go back I count them as Rough Riders. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I count them as Rough Riders. So in this bracket, they also have oh shoot. Native tongues versus the juice crew. Oh, mm. Oh, what's your pick? That's a that's a tough baby. one, right? Yeah. Versus the Juice Crew. Listen, for those who don't know, the Juice Crew, Big Daddy Kane, Cool G Rap. Mm -hmm. Biz Marquee. Mm -hmm. Biz Marquee. Mm -hmm. Craig G. Master Ace. Mm -hmm. Headed by Molly Maul. Some Roxanne Shante? Yeah. And who's Native Tongues again? Tribe Called Quest. Quest. De La. Jungle Brothers. De La. De La Jungle Sio. Brothers. Queen Latifah. Sipo. Moni Love. Oh, my God. Headed by Red Alert. How do you? Oh, I got to go with. I got to go with. Kane and Coogee. Coogee and Kane. I'm going with yeah. I got to go with them. They set the tone. Crew. They set the tone. I'm going Native Tongues. Yeah, I know, I know you are. I know look, you are. I'm going Native if you want, <laughs> it, it, Look, I was... About that time, we was in the streets, so that's what I probably was listening to. I was there on the block. Coogee rap. Especially Coogee rap. Coogee wow. rap was Kane, Coogee rap. They Two had the nicest. They thing. had the grip on, a real good grip at that moment. Right. A grip, for right. real. Two of yeah. the nicest, for sure. Yeah, they were definitely. Yeah, but, uh, tribe, Q -tip. Q -tip. tribes. Listen. Yeah, their reach. Yeah, is something different. That's a tough yeah, one. It was a different. Q Tip's production, as many people as he walked in, what Moni, what Queen Latifah became, De La Soul. They all off the yeah, backbone of the Juice Crew, though. I can't say that. I can't mm. say. I can't say that. Mm -mm. That's why this, this. This is why this is is a struggle for me because if you look at the founding fathers and mothers of this, and you keep going back, you keep saying, "Well, Follow they set on. the standard." You you take you take that out when it becomes a bracket versus bracket thing. It it, it becomes less about who inspired who and who's who's better. Yeah, who's just better? It, it, who's who, better? Who, who have more of an impact right. on you? That's what it becomes. That's Who's better, man? What? Between Between Native Tongues and the Juice Crew. Exactly. Things? Who's better, Mecca? Native Tongues. It Why? depends on what you're looking for. Like lyrics? Like we what we talking about. Listen, I love Kane. But Tribe. Tribe is good. Tribe was my calm down vibe. What you about know what I'm saying? Like, saying? Like, Coogee? Coogee, 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 Coogee,
in in 88. Mm-hmm. 87, 88, 89, Kane had the crown. There was no question about it. He was right. the best rapper on earth. He was the nicest dude out. However. Period. And Coogee and, Rap was right there. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, Kane, Coogee, right? Master Ace with his get down. Fucking, fucking um, Craig G. Craig G. Beating Super Nat in a battle. I'm hearing you. I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 hearing. I'm speaking the accolades of both crews. But then the success of Tribe. And the longevity. Longevity. And the fact that they brought jazz into it. Which every, yes. and the fact that Dilla was low key introduced the, the off the strength of The fact that that album Q. inspired The Chronic. Yeah. Dr. Dre is on record as saying that. The way Q-Tip gave it up made him want to do what he Q-tip needed was to. one of the, one That's a tough one. Q-Tip ones. got Redman his deal. He, he was got, in, in touch with bro, a lot of them. Bro, he got a lot of people. The deal, yeah. He, Shout he, out to he, Tip. You know what? It, it is always going to boil down to who sold the most. I'm not taking it by that. I'm not doing they're it They're going to go, because back then the numbers was real. You either did, this ain't this shit. Then they are what they are. Yeah, people still don't It don't matter. It's, 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 if you sold a million, that's what you sold. It ain't none of this. So when you get to the corporate, they're going to be like, well, who made the most money? That's why they're not invited that's, to this discussion. And, and that's, why they, <laughs> that's why they don't do great because they only go by the money. They don't even care if you got a, a, a talent in what you're doing. They don't mm-hmm. anybody. Well, they luck- don't pick right. Well, luckily, this is the people. And you can vote at BET.com. I'm going to, this, this bracket is crazy. We what? got Rockefeller versus G-Unit. Who damn. you picking? We got to do this now? The Rock. Rock. The Rock. Sorry, man. You wild. <laughs> you wild, Sorry. Bro. Fifth. Fifth. Rock with fifth. Fifth. I mean, we were the theme music to a lot of bullshit that I was doing out here. That is but I'm Brooklyn, son. <laughs> that is not I'm from I Brooklyn, was, son. Not a compliment. I'm from Brooklyn, son. <laughs> that is not something you're supposed to. That is no, not it's a, real. Not it's an real. addition. It's real, my nigga. Shout, shout out to Queens. 50 Queens get the on money. on the stereo, and we were riding dirt. I got to say, G. Right, G-Unit. Yep. Another vote for G-Unit. Against what? G-Unit? Against Rockefeller? Yeah. Who we got? If, I got to say G-Unit. You got to know. G-Unit. Even if it, it, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the rock, cause I know alone I got hove. There's only two of them that can really run through them technically. Right. Hove when it comes to really battle, when they're going head to head, is hove and Beanie Siegel. They, they're crushed. They're crushed. Right. Being alone. Yeah. Is a problem. Siegel. Siegel. Period. Rock is the G unit. Yeah, but. Nah, I'm neck. I'm about a dollar. What the fuck is 50 cents? Yeah. What are you talking oh, about? Jesus so, yeah. Stop so, playing. And bro. then they birthed Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. Which always has to be taken into account. Yeah. There it is. Love 50. G unit. Okay. Yeah. And, and lastly, we got Wu Tang versus. Wu Tang. Wu Tang versus Dreamville. I'm not jacking that at all. Well, versus who? What's the next Dreamville. Wu Tang Clean. 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 That's not fair. It's no, not. Who did yeah, that? It's not. That doesn't work. That's somebody who Wu-Tang. wanted to get J. Cole up out of there. B.E.T. Shot the J. Cole though. Yo, what? put them up against Wu Tang. Nah, B.E.T. Nah, what the? What the? B.E.T. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. B.E.T. Some, somebody did something. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with you, heard? I feel like somebody <laughs> lost the bet. That's yeah. not Ooh, man, I ain't going front. They better off saying ASAP Mob. Yeah. That would have been Dreamville. Mom. Dreamville and ASAP Mob? In my Mom? opinion. I'm I saw that. ASAP yeah. Mob versus Wu Tang Clan. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, just remember you can vote at BT.com. Go check this out. Yo, yo. Listen, man. <laughs> just be honest. Be honest with yourself, okay? <laughs> be honest with yourself. You know what I mean? Don't, don't be like, no, they're the underdogs. This is a <laughs> <laughs> Like you did. <laughs> oh, my generation. Don't you know about no generation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> J, no. J. Cole is way older than you, so stop. He stop. <laughs> she said stop. she know two artists from Wu-Tang. Method nah, Red. Method Red. Method Red. She said Method Red. Method Red. That, that, that. I, I'm not going to keep, we're not going to keep rewinding those. Cut that part out. Cut that part out. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut this one out too. Yo, she asked a big, big daddy came for a patch before. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs>
No, they not. No, they not. Slick Rick. No, fuck they not. That's Slick Rick. No, they not. No, they not. Moment of silence. How would you do that? Moment of silence. She should have never said it. For her shambles. Oh, oh, get out. Get shout out, out to Gina. Out. Shout out. out to Get out. That's your people. Get out. Yo, yo shout out to Gina. That's your people. Look, this is not. Kids. Listen. Parents. Oh, hell no. Stop, stop, stop. Parents, talk to your kids. Word. Talk to your kids. About this hip hop thing, all right? Talk to them. Talk to them. Parents, stay in your child's lives. Whatever you listen to, make a check for it. Get on their Instagrams. Don't let them run them up. Wow, D, um, we know we laughing and joking. It's the good yeah. times. Sometimes we have bad times. Now, I remember reading the headline about you being in a bad car accident. Bike. Bike accident, T-Rex. Mm -hmm. It seemed like the whole industry was praying for you. I got to see how much respect you had amongst the artists. Mm. At that moment, did you feel like mm -hmm. I could lose all of this? Like this could, was, was that a fear? Mm, at that moment, no, I wasn't really. I wasn't really thinking about that. You know, you, when you're in that type of situation, you're trying to um, just recover, regroup. Be just more interested in just being able to. Let me tell you what I was interested in. My jaw was broke. Both my legs was broke. My shoulders was broke. You want to know what I really cared about? What? My jaw was wired, so everything was off. You know, you wake up and I was in a coma for like. Three months. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you wake up, you get out of the coma and you go through certain things and you can't really eat, you can't chew or nothing. I wasn't caring about nothing. All I was worried about is I can't wait to have a bar bite a burger. <laughs> That's it. You just <laughs> wanted a burger. That's it. I didn't care about nothing else. I can't wait to bite a burger. Because you gotta, you know, they feed you through the IV and the straws. So yeah. I just wanted to bite a burger. That's it. That, that is was not it. where GPS said we were going with <laughs> <laughs> Not what nah, I thought man. you were going to say. Yeah, you know That's what? It. I felt like he was going in that direction, bro. I did not. That's how you feel, man. Like, I like, did not. Sipping through a straw. The bike. But, but the, the, the process is, you know, it, it's, it changes you your whole life because you get to sit back and, and, and think about a lot of things and, and, and there's nothing more valuable than time. So all that time that I probably wasn't able to move around for, for years. It could have been two, three years, because it was, you know, I was in a coma, concussion, all type of different things, shoulder, everything. Right. So it took me a minute to walk. It took me a minute to be able to talk a little, you know, it's a process, it's a slow process right. as you go. So when you go in a coma, your body shuts down, everything's erased. Mm. You gotta, now, you got to reprogram yourself. You know, they, they, they do um, different things like they play with you with puzzles and stuff to see where your mind, your memory and all that. Mm -hmm. Colors, what color is that? What color is this? And they got to work your brain to get it back functionable. Right. So it was a process. You know, it, it took, could have took about three years. Could have been longer. I don't even know. But it was a process to even first take your first couple of steps all that type of stuff you had to go through. So it was a process. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's going to affect it because musically, like I told you, I took on the responsibility for the music. Right. So I did all the music. So if something happened when it happened to me, it it, it kind of interfered with the music hmm. because I was doing the music. Like it was right. me and the engineer every day, every day. And once, you know, they want me, everybody can do it, but you, it's a certain way you can work with the artists. They was comfortable with me. They probably wasn't comfortable with everybody else. Yeah. I wasn't there. They probably said, eh, eh, you know, they didn't, they didn't perform for them like they did for me. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So it, 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 it affected the brand. It affected a lot of things because, you know, it, it was a whole, because I was, um, I was probably doing an album, like, at least, at least every 60 days. Mm. You know, I, I had to um, call my engineer and ask him um, how many albums did we do? And he was like, oh, we, in eight years, we did about 15 albums. He just told me that not too long ago because I had just asked him and wanted to know. And he was like, we did about 15 albums. You know, we did, we did compilations. We did EX, 3 ds you know. So he said about 15 albums, which is an eight-year period. So, it was, you know, it, it, that took a toll because now you got to go and start. It's like starting all over again. Right. Mm. When you're out of it for so long, then everybody's moving this way, that way. So, you know, you just got to... um. Reprogram it, you know, have love for it, and you know, it'll never be like it was. It's never ever like you when you when you first did it. You right. never ever get that feeling again. Right. right. But during that time, what were your um, what were your main thoughts? What were the things that you you made that that, that came to your mind like this? This was important. We got to change this. We got to change that. What in the as far as when I was in the, the coma. perspective, yeah. The perspective or even going through everything that you went through. What kind of perspective did you come out of it with? Well, the main thing for me was it wasn't even, it wasn't music per se, it was just life. Certain things you got to change in life. You know, you, you can't do this. You got to do that. This is more important than that. You know, you got to structure your life differently. You know, I'm not able to move as fast as I was then, so now you got to slow everything down because you got to move at a at a certain pace right. you know so you gotta you gotta pull back and just appreciate life once and, and, and cherish every day and, and live every day like it's your last give it your all every day as you could so i just do that every day you know and surround yourself with people that believe in you and you believe in them and they got love for you and that's all you can right. do yeah, that's good for me. Like, you got right that you get that burger. <laughs> a couple burgers. We get a couple burgers. <sighs> Look, you got, you got, you got to, you, you know, you know what you got to do in life, because we all come from the same struggle. Most of us, well, not most of us, all of us, because. Struggle is the struggle, no matter if you got it or you don't. You gotta, you gotta be able to. Put, God puts you in position to position others. So how I think is like this: If I'm in position, I'm gonna position you. I'm gonna position you. I'm gonna position you. I'm gonna position everybody that I can position. Because you know what makes that? If you're in position, you're in position. Everybody's in position. That just makes me stronger. Because mm -hmm. everybody's in position. If I got a problem, I'm going to call him. I got a problem, I'm going to call him. So I can call, and which I can now. Like I, I, If I call on anybody, they're going to probably, if I need something they're going to do, I could call Kiss, I could call Swiss, I could call Eve, I could call any one of them. And it's just different people that you help get in position. Right. So when you do need them 10 years from now, they can't forget that you put them in position and they probably gonna help you. So you position other people. So when you're not in position, they might be in position. Seuss was in position. I was in position. He's in position now. So when I want, I just call him. And be like, dude. He'd be like, all right, come on, let's go. Oh. That's how it goes. So it's a pass down. So, so can you can you call him and tell him to come on the show? <laughs> <laughs> Swizzy, let me see. You reaching for his phone? Mm -hmm. Reaching for his phone. Let me get Swizzy. He, he, he probably, you know, he's in Saudi Arabia. He is in Saudi Arabia, I know that, but he might not pick up. But I'm gonna do this one for, for him. Let me see where he at. You really told me it was in Saudi. Silence falls on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. This, this will be. Let me nice. see if I can FaceTime him. Cha 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 cha. Because he can't get FaceTime over there if he's in Saudi. You gotta use what's that? Uh, well, this one works. So you use what? It'll go through. You face something. 
We all want the edge of our seats. <laughs> no, he's in Saudi for sure. Well, he might, he could be. He might still so be on much. the plane. He'd be flying so much, I don't know where he'd be at. No. Sorry. <laughs> Good try, we, we man. Cut that out. No. Cut that out. <laughs> you gonna want him hitting him back? Watch. You gonna hit him back before you leave. Yeah, Facts. Yep. It's all good. Go put tried. that out there. He's shooting him a text. Are <laughs> you shooting him a text? That's what's up. We don't have to be quiet for the text. <laughs> he actually, I told you, he uh, Swiss commented on the um, one of the Dean Grease clips. Did he? Yeah. Say right, what? Jess? Yeah. He what? said, um, he said all facts, nothing but truth, fire. Or something that I, I, they said, um, no. when Dame said him and X was outside, you know, doing mm -hmm. a one two. So he was commenting on that. That's what's up. Yeah. Hmm. All I gotta say. Um. I sent him a text. Let me see if he get it. But go ahead. We go, I can see him if he texts. Your contribution and knowing that you sat in the room with the engineer putting these songs who were like the theme of summers, winters, moments where either we were up, we were down, we turned to this music, we were looking for guidance, we turned to this music to know that you sat there and you helped Put those things together. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. We thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Are we are we gonna get another Rough Riders compilation at any time soon? You know what? We we probably do. Uh, we got a couple of, like my nephew and my brothers working on different things, so we just. We are putting some stuff together. We 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 can, uh, I mean, you know what Swiss is doing the album right now too. He ready to put an album. He just um, he did about eight songs. They got it good now because you asked that was fifteen. Eight songs. Shit, one album is two albums. Now. Right, right. They do eight albums. That's an album. Eight yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah, that's an album. Bang, bang. I think he released it already. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, it's out right now. Yeah, he, he was over. What? Mm -hmm. The Swiss album. Yeah, this album. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. album. Yeah, it's on iTunes and everything. It's on all platforms right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he yeah. rocking with um, Shout to Scarlet. He rocking with Scarlet. 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 Yeah, he, he did something with Kiss. Right yeah. He did something with Kiss. He did something yeah. with J Electronica. He did um, Nas. Mm -hmm. Insane. Right. Insane. Shout out to Swiss. He did a joint. He did a, a song with um, him, Kiss. It was that video he shot. Paul, what was that video he shot? Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher, yes. Uh, that's, that's Scarlet. Scarlet, Scarlet that, yes. That, that, yeah, that record they was all, They all on that. So he, he got them on his album, too. All right, well, Swiss, come on, man. It's showtime. Come on. Let's get it. Gee, thanks again. Um, yeah. This is hot for Trap, trap, and turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars.